What is going on everybody? The anticipated new game plus for God of War Ragnarok is finally out. I have beelined the story to the moment when Muspelheim trials are available and I'm going to say it right off the bat. It is really good and enough to motivate me to play the game more. So without further ado, let's jump into new game plus updates and my thoughts about them. First things first, skipping cutscenes. We wanted it, we got it. God of War Ragnarok packs hours of amazing cutscenes and even though I would highly recommend having a second playthrough still without skipping those, uh, knowing the full story gives a very different perspective on dialogues like when Tyr agrees to send a Atreus to Asgard again, he says that it is good to have an eye in the enemy ranks. Oh, cheeky bastard. Starting from the third playthrough, the lengthy cutscenes start to waste too much time. Though, I have to say, the feature feels a little bit half-baked. One of the problems with it that you can't skip any of those moments where you have minimal control, but they are essentially cutscenes. Like inside the shrines, you always have to watch the prophecy. No way to skip it. Still saves a lot of time and I wouldn't be anywhere near as far as Muspelheim without it. Since we are talking about skipping stuff that people don't like, lots of people don't like Atreus sections, so those are not skippable. I never expected them to be, so no surprises here, but some people hoped for it. Sorry guys, you still will have to play it. I personally okay with Atreus sections, with exception of stupid cow level, it's absolutely insufferable. For some reason I felt like Yala moves faster now, and as a result the entire section took less time, which is obviously... A uh, great, great thing if that's the true and not just my feeling. There are some gameplay updates for Triss. Now he has this kind of the realm shift mechanic. After performing a parry or last second dodge, you have an option to press L2. It will slow the time as you aim and will allow you to shoot a volley of arrows during the realm shift window. Realm shift is very generous but fully bound. It will start uh, to the L2, it will start when you press L2 and it will stop as soon as you release it. I enjoyed this little mechanic, I think it is enough to alter Treo's gameplay in a good way. Uh, now, before we go to meet the creator's part, one more important thing for people who wanted to replay the bosses, I have found this option and I can't see any evidence of it. So, as you play through the game, make sure to save the game before bosses you might want to replay. Okay, Kratos, time to speak about new items. First, Black Bear Armor Set. We want the Cloak Kratos, developers delivered. It looks absolutely amazing, even though I don't usually do transmogs because I play in a different build and I want to know what build I'm playing by looking at it, but I could not resist to transmog my armor into this one. From the perk's perspective, it's a dodge-based armor, chest piece shoots value of by first shards in the last second dodge, wrist and waist increase the damage of attacks immediately after dodging 20% each. Hello Alfheim set. Those are pretty cool, uh, they definitely can add more to lots of different builds, there are definitely going to be some mixes with the Radiance set, but I don't see how it can generate something conceptually different. Then we have Aries set, as expected, it's Vitality, Rage set. There will be some builds for us, uh, Vitality builds, Mixing Souls and Fate Breaker with this one. Haven't touched it yet, but definitely will be doing some late game builds with it. And of course there is Zeus Alma set, as understood it is pretty much a port of one from 2018, the Glass Ballista build. As patch notes say, it is available through Remnant of Asgard and Gnar, so you can't get a single piece before finishing the game. There won't be much use of the full set before you start your third playthrough. Obviously, I haven't touched it yet, but if it feels anything like the one from 2019, it is a great option for Give Me God of War difficulty. Because if you play damage focus set, you are not going to be able to take many hits anyway, so might as well crank your damage to 11. And of course, the Spartan set and all the weapon upgrades has no stats and can't be upgraded beyond level 1. This minor but very welcome addition, because I want to do some low level Kratos challenges, but my save for NG Plus had an upgraded survival set. Having this set just for challenges is a very very nice touch from developers. We also got the new shield, uh, I haven't touched it yet, from description it is essentially a guardian shield with smaller parry windows but stronger counters. 
Um, I'm really, really scared of small parry windows. I really doubt I will ever use it for regular encounters, but I might use it for bosses. Okay, to the enchantments. There are three types of new enchantments I found in New Game Plus. Enchantments with perks from armor, mostly chest pieces, and some runs, burdens, and stat enchantments. Burdens available from the very beginning, those are enchantments that essentially makes your game harder, reducing regeneration, forcing to take damage if you mess up parry, etc. They cost some hack silver and those are a great way to challenge yourself. There are 9 of them to fill your amulet for maximum suffering. I don't think I will be doing full playthrough with those, but I might be doing some bosses. Though I have an idea how to use one of the burdens to advantage. Then the burden that applies frost on craters if you roll. Parried it with Ron that transfers the status effect to enemies on shield strike and you will be able to freeze enemies in no time. Hmm, do you think it will be a viable combo? Anyway, enough of my crazy ideas. Next type of enchantment I wanted to get out of the way are stat enchantments. Those drops from Berserkers, the one I have seen from Freaking Gift 30 Defense and a little bit of something else. With stats as high as they are in New Game Plus, it may not sound like much, but it could be crucial for min-maxing the build. Uh, because of the next type of enchantments, which is a completely game-changer in God of War Ragnarok build system. Enchantments that hold perks from armor or runes. You can buy those from the very beginning for gilded coins. You gain gilded coins every time you create a New Game Plus item. The enchantment that have perks from Ron cost less and has no stat requirements. But the most interesting one are enchantments that hold perks from armor, mostly chest pieces. They, uh, they have stat requirements. As you can imagine, it opens up an insane amount of opportunities for the builds. But what is important to understand that the perk that activated by stat at which this armor already is pretty good. And this is where those stat enchantments may come into play. If you want the perk, this enchantment may help to push the stat just over the line to activate it without touching any other items in your build. I have like a million ideas in my head now that I want to try, but for now I decided not to overwhelm myself with those and simply improve my lucky repost build by getting Husk Chest perk from the enchantment and putting on Dragon Scale Chest for an amazing perk that triggers on blocks and berries that I wanted in this build so much for actually way, way before New Game Plus was released. Since we're talking about that, I think it's important to know the Northern Chest that now hold uh, Celestial Dews an extra 2 star uh, stat may feel like nothing, but during my playthrough 2 Nornir chests that gave me defense were the difference between having Husk enchantment active and not. So uh, yeah, in the end of the day it actually will be important for min-maxing the build. Let's talk about the economy now. New Game Plus is very generous with resources to upgrade New Game Plus items. So you don't have to worry about it much. I was beelining the story till the moment when Muspelheim opens. By the time I got to Muspelheim, I had all but three items in my build upgraded to level 10, with exception of weapons, of course. Uh, by just collecting things on the way. And this was only limited by lack of embers, because I didn't grind trials on the save. Not because of lack of those new resources. After spending an hour in Trials, uh, everything in my gear except weapons was level 10. I also had a Substitute Shield, Wrist and Chest level 10 as well. So yeah, definitely do not worry too much. You will have an opportunity to upgrade way more than one set to max level. Speaking of Muspelheim Trials, I did all Tier 1, 2 and 3 Trials and Boss Rush Challenge from Final Trials. There are definitely some overhauls of those, so... Um, Here's what I've noticed. The biggest change across all trials is spawn points. Enemies now spawn from different gates compared to a standard game. This results in surrounding you way more often or in spreading across the arena forcing you to chase the enemies. I felt like there's a bit of rebalancing happened. I'm not 100% sure, but feeding the rift challenge, one of the most hated by myself, felt a bit easier. What I am 100% sure of, that population control and King of the Hill 
both those challenges on the right side become harder. Population control is still probably the easiest challenge of all, but because spawns were from different direction and I had to chase the enemies, at least there was one moment when arena was overpopulated. Not like it puts a challenge at any risk, but I never have seen this situation before. King of the Hill, on the other hand, became a nightmare. It felt like they increased the number of enemies, and those enemies are pushing from all directions. So it require a lot of movement in third phase where you have to defend three areas at the same time. For me, this one used to be somewhere in the middle of the bunch on difficulty in base 4, 6 challenges. Now it is definitely the most difficult one. Important note, I was doing it on level 9++, which means I was perfectly le leveled for tier 2 challenges. For the final challenges, I only tried boss rush. No difference here, unfortunately, it is exactly the same challenge as it used to be. Um, on the bright side, final challenge is now tuned to level 10. This is actually a very, very important change because it means they won't be all green and way too easy when we will come back to those with all top gear. I haven't dodged other challenges because I was only level 9++, which means I was too level behind and I didn't want to spend too much time there. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is attack pattern changes. Patch mentioned AI changes for Gna, Berserkers, Hateful, and Ormstunga? Ormstunga! Seriously, this little piece of shit. Anyway, I have checked out Freakney, Berserk, and Midgard, and some Hatefuls. And yeah, changes are there, and those changes are pretty good. Let's start from Freakney. First of all, Berserkers now have Runic Shield, the one that prevents staggering from running attacks. Uh, it's active not because you spam runics like crazy, but just because they can activate them. It looks like it is only a give me no mercy and give me god of war feature, so if you are playing on one of those difficulties, be more cautious while using your runic attacks. I have never been using runic attacks too much, so I personally don't really care. Also, Freakney has three of her moves updated. Her unblockable charge lifts three bombs on the way that will explode after a small delay. Her overhead unblockable strike leaves damaging AoE for a duration. Extremely annoying. Her block breaker attack now starts with two blockable projectiles. So you can't just wait to parry this one. You need to block, then release L1 and then press it again. But not too fast so you don't accidentally shield strike. This was enough to make her more interesting and I'm so excited to fight all Berserkers with all the updated moves. But what is important to understand, Freakney moves still have the same feel, same timings. Reactions are different, but all of it still is familiar. Uh, but you know what doesn't feel familiar at all? Hateful. Um, I really hate Hateful now. Everything you know about her, every single reflex you developed will betray you in this MG Plus experience. Most of her block breaker attacks now have more delay, so if you will use your old reference points for parry, you, your block will be broken. And of course the move where she sets herself on fire and then explodes when you hit her, well now she just explodes in your face. I was like, hmm, I'm pretty sure I didn't hit her. Why? Was it Freya? No, she just explodes on the spot and fucks you up. I wouldn't say she is much more difficult than she was. It just game makes your reflexes works against you, so you have to learn again. If that's the approach they will take with Gna, I am absolutely terrified. A bit of a note here, I'm not sure if that stands for Hateful, not in Midgard, because uh, the one I killed, they were not really high level and I just obliterated them too fast to learn anything about them. Okay, this wraps it up and, well, if you can speak for that long about new content in New Game Plus, for sure can say it is a good one. Santa Monica Studios provided us with an amazing update, tons of changes, breathing new life into the game. I absolutely love it. Let me know in the comments what do you think about God of War Ragnarok New Game Plus. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.